All of them, like many other tribes, when they talk about language and how they got language, they um, talk about their origin, how the people came to be. When people were created, they were given different things by the creator and things like thoughtfulness, you know, to be able to think and all your other senses and so forth. And then one of the things that people were given as they were created was language. And so all these things that we were given is where we get the, the understanding that they were gifts. And so all of them, like other tribes, think of uh, language in that way, you know, that it's something sacred and that you take care of it and, and um, you have a responsibility to it in, in a lot of different ways. My name is Ophelia Cepeda, and I'm a, a Regents Professor in the Department of Linguistics. And I'm also the Director of the American Indian Language Development Institute, also here at the University. You know, most people think of languages, you know, just uh, to use for communication. So, of course, that's very important. Uh, but for tribal communities, you know, there's so many, so much that is embedded in the language. It sort of holds a lot of uh, the traditional knowledge that uh, is simply still passed down or around uh, orally, you know, so you don't have the luxury of going to go find it in some reference book or whatever. Uh, you have to talk to someone. Uh, someone who knows that knowledge. Language is always in there, even if it's in the form of uh, songs and uh, speeches or orations or prayers. So there's a lot, you know, that, that the language is sort of responsible for in a community. The situation that you look at when a language is labeled endangered is when there are no speakers coming up. And so all of them is in this situation. We don't have children or young people speaking all of them or learning all of them in the home. And many, if not all, you know, indigenous languages in the United States fall in that category. The other question, though, is like why, you know, that that is occurring. And we just look at societal change within Native communities. Some, you know, within the family, some within the society, a, a social organization of a tribe. And then, of course, big institutions like schools uh, are big factors in, in language loss and, and for, for language communities and tribes to be on that endangered language list. Uh, we're the Rios family. So my father is Don Autumn and my mother's Navajo. I grew up on the Navajo Nation with my mom's parents, which are my grandparents, um, who rarely spoke English, uh, little if they did. Uh, so the household, we spoke Navajo every day. I really wasn't exposed to the Don Autumn language, and it wasn't until um, later on in college and I started working for the tribe that I started uh, I guess being more in contact with the language, but I want to take that to the next level and and really show and teach my kids Don Autumn because that's part of who they are as well. This past year, our community college with the Don Autumn Nation, they're offering classes, um, and I started taking those classes. I will say it's harder trying to learn a language later on in life rather than you learning your language from the beginning at such a young age. I think what worries me most about um, languages being endangered, uh, and I think it's all indigenous language, um, is just to be able to speak uh, with our um, loved ones. I grew up in a family that spoke Navajo, and to this day, um, when I go home, I mainly speak uh, Navajo, because that's what my mother speaks, my grandparents speak, uh, my aunts and my uncles, uh, and even the little kids. 
We're very fortunate to be homeschooling. Um, I, I know that not all families are able to do that, but for us, we're able to. And I think that's one um, advantage that we have is that our kids are at home with us. And so my husband and I really uh, take it seriously to speak uh, our Navajo and Thanawatham languages within our home. We also do um, an online class um, with our boys where they're exposed to other kids um, and, the, and the teacher leads it in the Autumn language. What I liked about taking the Autumn class was because that I got to see a, a lot of other kids and I got to learn the language and a teacher made it really fun. My favorite word in Don Austin was good dash. And what does that mean? A uh, good day. The fun thing was about her reading Don Austin books. As a child, my first language was Tana Adam. I grew up in a generation when, where that was much more common. Myself and all my siblings learned English once we attended school, and most of us attended school fairly late. That is, we were older before we ever went to uh, school. I went to a junior college first, and from there I transferred to Arizona State University just for one year before coming here. But one thing that I was really interested in at that time as a young person was to know how to read and write the language. I'm not sure why I wanted to do that, but I know that was something I wanted to do. And there were actually like only two or three books. One was a dictionary, one was a collection of traditional stories that were written in all of them. And uh, I had those books, and I would look at the all of them and just stare at it for, you know, long periods of time, and I couldn't figure, figure it out. I didn't know why I couldn't read it. I just assumed that I could read it because I can speak it. But then I figured out you have to be taught how to read and write just like you were taught how to read and write English. Okay, right. Where will you go? How far will you go? And then back up to the good goals. Well, early on, of course, some of the, the barriers which we still have now, actually, and not just for all of them, but other indigenous languages, is that we still don't have a lot of materials and resources for, for the classroom. The Autumn Nation now has an Autumn Language Center where a lot of that work uh, is happening and will continue to happen because that center serves the whole nation, the whole Autumn Nation. I'm so appreciative of the staff at the community college because they're understanding and they, they're really taking it step by step to teach us as, as uh, beginners, you know, to really know and understand the language and making it an easy transition. In recent years, there has, I think, been more interest by young adults to study all of them and learn all of them. It's sort of like young people who want to affirm who they are, acknowledging their background, their culture, and their history, and so forth. We have a lot of uh, generations and our ancestors that worked hard to preserve that language, and you know we want to do what we can to help preserve this language as well for the future generations.